Hi, I'm Engelbert Humpernick and you're watching Noise11.com. <laughs> And we welcome Ingelbert Humperdinck to Noise11.com. And, well, I get to talk to you as Ingelbert Humperdinck, record company mogul this time, uh, Ingelbert. <laughs> well, <laughs> Co-founder of Spin Records. Well, it's, it's going to be nice. It's, it's nice. And it's, uh, in the, today's world, it's, it's an easy way to get your records out in a hurry, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it might help not only me, but other people who wish to join the label. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the great thing about this record is that the first record that is coming out is uh, the uh, new record... Runaway uh, Country. Runaway Country, which uh, is really a throwback to where you first started because Release Me was yeah. a country song. Uh, country music seems to be in my, in, my, in my blood because the first one, as you said, Release Me, Am I That Easy to Forget, you know, uh, uh, There Goes My Everything. They were all country songs and they were all... Up in the top top three, you know, always really when it, when they were released, mm. and uh, I seem to have an affinity with country music, and uh, and now that I've been involved with not only great country people like Willie Nelson, you know, and Kenyon Rogers who sings, uh, I'm uh, I, I feel good about this album. Well, you, with the last album, you were in the studio with uh, with yes, Willie and yeah, Kenny. Yeah. Is that sort of part of the inspiration for yes. wanting to reconnect with those early roots? Uh, but this one, this particular album, you know, I think um, ha has a good meter to it because I, 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 I was partly very responsible for pulling certain instruments out that we'd put in, you know, at the beginning. So we pulled them out and made it more commercial and more so easy on the ear and not so much uh, going on behind. Let you hear the voice and hear the style of the music, you know, and, uh, I, and Runaway Country to me, with the new song, Runaway, uh, uh, has been working very well on the road. Mm -hmm. Well, and working very well on the road in a brand new sense because it only debuted as a live song for you uh, the other day in Perth, Runaway. The, oh, yeah? yeah? And it was, how did it go? How did it go? Yeah, well, you tell Good me. Reaction. The audience loved it? Oh, the audience loved yeah. it. Oh, are you talk I thought you said, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Perth. It went very well in Perth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well. And I'm... And I'm certainly, I can't wait to, tr to try it out on the Melbourne audience, you know, mm -hmm. and, and see their feelings about it. Mm. Um, I, I rather like it. I rather like it. I think it's the most commercial song, uh, single I've, I've put out in a long time. The, uh, the song is a very strong song, and uh, particularly for somebody like you who has just, you know, the most incredible set list that you uh, get to perform each night. Uh, you know, you have to be very careful with when you place a new song in there and this song just sounds like it was meant to be always part of the Engelbert Humperdinck repertoire. But it, it, it has a, a certain amount of uh, easiness, simplicity, you know, it, it, it's, easy, it's easy on the ear, it has a good lyric, it has a meaning, it has an image, you know, a runaway, you could see, you could feed trains, you can see the image when I sing it on stage, you know, of what, what the, the lyrics are all about. And, and the audience pick it up so quickly and they sing along with you. And, of course, the arms go as well, you know, which is rather nice. And I, I've been looking for a song like that for a long time to get audience reaction, to get audience participation, because that's what it's all about, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, believe it or not, I am the artist, but audience, they love to sing mm. and they love to move around with you. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why I like this song. This has every ingredient that makes that happen. Mm. You were back in the studio with Lauren Wilde, who you worked with uh, previously on, yeah. the, uh, on the duets record. So that's obviously a, a good working relationship. Yes, it was fine. Yeah, we did great. We did the album in, in a quick space of time. Uh, I have a studio at my house, so it, it makes it that much easier so I don't have to get in my car and drive and cut, you know, go out and to another studio. But we did everything in my studio, which was wonderful, you know. And, uh, the only thing is it was mastered in the proper studio. Mm -hmm. There's uh, some tracks on here that I've heard you perform live over the years. I'm yeah. on Fire, the Bruce Springsteen yeah. song, for instance. And, it, and it's even better now because, you know, we've added certain things to it and it becomes, it comes, becomes more live on stage now and when I do it on stage. You know, I, I've used that song in my show because I particularly love it. You know, it, it, it's really a rock song, but we've turned it into, you know, something different. Mm. There's uh, a, a couple of Eagles tracks on here, The Best of My Love and also Desperado on there. Yeah. Uh, 
you know. Oh, my, my one of my favorite songs, that mm -hmm. is. And there's an also a Boss Cags on it, which I, I so much enjoy singing on stage because uh, my interpretation of the song on stage is, uh, I don't know, it, it, it jumps out of the record a little bit more, you know, because uh, uh, when you're on stage, sometimes your stage performance is not as good as your record performance, but now it's different with me. <laughs> I think my stage performance is better than my record performance, and I'm saying that most innocently and, and humbly because I, I, a lot of people would just want their record to be the best thing, but mm -hmm. I think my live performance is, is much more real and much more that's what I want them to see. Mm. It's interesting it being a country record because uh, we're sort of sourcing from artists like Bruce Springsteen, The Eagles, mm. uh, Boss Gags, Bob Seger, but you, you actually go back to Charlie Rich here, who is uh, yeah. you know, 100% yeah. uh, country artist yeah. uh, in Behind Closed Doors. Was yeah, that particularly a favorite song? I, lo I love that song. I yeah. love that song. And I think the, my version, with everything taken out and, and made it more simple, becomes a... Uh, 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 Better listening, I think it's easier listening, mm -hmm. and uh, all, the, all the song is so representative of Charlie Rich. But you know, we've taken it, uh, removed it just a little bit from him, you know, because he's such a powerful name. Mm -hmm. That's a forty-year song, forty-year-old yeah. song. Mm -hmm. Have you performed that in the past? I have, yes, I have in the past. But now I'm bringing it back. Everything took, goes around, comes around, comes around, goes around, you know, and, and I think. You know, like the Boss Gags song, it's, so, oh, it's an old song, 40-something years, right? And now we've made it brand new again. You know, it's just, it's like the clothes, the trends, you know, they change, but they come back, they go, come back, the flared pants, the tight pants. There's a, it's, all, it's all a question of time before it comes back. People like to repeat themselves, you know, mm. uh, repeat trends, bring it back, bring it back. That was great, bring it back, mm -hmm. you know? And that's that, that goes with the music as well. Mm. A song like Everybody's Talking is even an older song yeah. than Behind Closed Doors. Harry Nilsson was such a, a genius songwriter, wasn't he? And you, you particularly paid close attention to the words of the songs. Is that part of the reason why you would choose a song yeah. like Everybody's Talking? Yeah, I think I like good, good storytelling. I like good lyrics. I like good melodies. And, and uh, when I'm on stage, you'll see that I really know what I'm talking about, you know, because I consider myself... Uh, a thespian uh, of song, and uh, I try to enact everything that I'm singing uh, and make them understand uh, uh, every, each and every word I, I bring out, on, out of my mouth mm -hmm. on stage. And you have to know what you're, tra you're talking about. Mm. Uh, there's another uh, track that I want to talk about, Sunshine on My Shoulders, which is a John Denver song. Mm. And here's some trivia for you. John Denver was the previous person to perform at Rod Lave Arena here in Melbourne with just himself on a guitar yeah. until Ed Sheeran came along. And Ed Sheeran is another person that you're singing a song of in your show. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, he was the innovator in a, in a lot of ways, you know. I love his song, I loved his music. I just, as a matter of fact, I just watched his bio just a little while ago mm -hmm. uh, uh, on television. And uh, what a character, what a, what a, oh, yeah. what a talent, mm. you know, just amazing. Mm. As a matter of fact, uh, his wife was a backup singer on one of the tracks that's on this album. Is that right? Yeah. On that song? On, on, that the, song. on the John Denver song? On the John Denver song. Wow. Yeah. He was quite political too in his day. He was uh, one of the instigators yeah. of, uh, of uh, the stickers for censorship on, uh, on DVDs and, and CDs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, you know, he was, an, he was a very bright man. He, you know, he, uh, he had to be intelligent to fly his own plane. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, the accident took him. But uh, I mean, you have to have a good brain in order to be a, a pilot. Mm. And uh, not only that, but he wrote some amazing lyrics, and and he was an amazing musician and a great performer on stage. And and a person like him, who's mixed with with presidents and people like that, you know, uh, you know, uh, you have to have some standing to be involved with those people. Mm. So I guess uh, in a certain uh, level, Ed Sheeran is sort of the heir apparent. I to think John so. Denver. I think this, 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 this kid's going to be, I call him a kid, he's going to be around a long, long time, you know, because he has, he has a, a, a great, he's humble, you know, he, and he's, he's, he's very good, he's very, uh, very nice to people, he's, uh, he's not complacent in any way, he's not, he's not conceited, I don't think, he's 
with all this talent and and now he must have an awful lot of money. <laughs> you know, he's still a nice guy, and and I hope he remains that way because uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah, and he's quite a generous kid too, giving yeah. a credit to yeah. his friend to get her out of financial trouble for the song that you're singing in your show. Yeah, thinking out loud. Yeah, mm. I hope I, I hope the audience like my version of it. <laughs> You know? Yeah, but um, it, you know it is different. I mean, I do sing it a little differently, obviously, but uh, but he put he made his mark with it, and uh, and there are other other performers who enjoy doing other people's material, uh, especially if it's a great song. So, and I do, I do enjoy singing other people's material now and then. Mm -hmm. You know, although I have a a big repertoire of my own music, you do I do like to slide away from it and get into somebody else's. Uh, uh, repertoire. Yeah. Well, Ed comes from Elton John Management, and there's another link back to your live show because yeah. there's Elton in yeah. your live show every night, not in person, of course, but up on the screen. It's it's marvelous what technology allows yeah. you to yeah. do now, yeah. isn't it? Elton's a sweet guy, you know. And uh, you you ask him, say, Elton, you mind if we use your voice? Oh, go ahead. You know, mm. he's just a lovely man, and and uh, it, it brings so much more to the stage knowing that people are knowing. That you know, they, you could hear it on record, but when you see it uh, uh, with maybe just film, you know, it's, it's so much means so much more. Mm. When you recorded that duet with Elton John, the two of you were together for that, weren't you? Yeah, we never. <laughs> the funny thing with 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 Elton, you know, we uh, we were in the studio for over an hour, just sitting there talking, chewing the fat, talking about old times, you know, and and how we first. I actually I met Elton on a plane. Uh, coming from LA to to London, and uh, Elton was sitting in front. I was very shy in the early days, you know. And I, thought, I, I would love to go over and say hello to him, but you know, uh, how do you do that? Then you know, and Elton was sitting there in his regalia. He had, had a beautiful walking stick that you could take on the plane in those days, and he had one of those sitting on his uh, thing next to him. And uh, a little bit later on, all of a sudden. I was looking out of out of the window, and I felt somebody sit on my the handle of my chair. It was Alton. <laughs> hey, how are you? And you know, it took so much pressure off me mm -hmm. to think this big man came over and sat and talked to me. I don't. I should have gone over and talked to him. You know, <laughs> but uh, I was the, I was the shy one. I wasn't conceited. I was just shy. Yeah. You know, and, but I was so happy that he came over and and spoke to me. And of course, we've been friends ever since. Mm. There's a, a song on the album that I'm not. That familiar with totally amazing. What is the story with totally amazing? Oh, <laughs> well, it's a, it's a song that I started writing uh, in the Pink Palace. I used to have the, a, a place called the Pink Palace, and uh, on Sunset Boulevard that used to belong to Jane Mansfield. You know, that story, mm -hmm. and uh, I started writing the song there because the, the word totally amazing kept coming into my head. Totally amazing. That's what you are. You know, and and then um, I, I wrote a little piece of it, and then I said to my daughter Louise, Louise, I need you to help me put some lyrics to the song. I can't get any further than "Totally Amazing." That's what you are, and so between us, we came up with the song "Totally Amazing," which I think is a is a is a great track, and it's a good track on the album. It's a good closer, and uh, I'm happy we wrote it. Mm. The Pink Palace that you mentioned there. Now, was that the house that was next door to the Playboy Mansion? Uh, it was the Playboy Mansion was behind, uh -huh. yeah, and uh, uh, actually the house opposite was where Michael Jackson passed away. Wow. Okay. and that's one of the reasons why you know I wanted to get away from there because I had I had a uh, not the Playboy Mansion, but you know the fact that people were getting killed or people were dying on that. So I got away from that, and I I live up high on the on a mountain now, and. Uh, there's no there's no noise like for the the heavy traffic on sunset, so it's 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 good to live in the quiet. Mm. How often do you get home to England to the home in Leicester? Uh, talking about going home to England, I love to get home at Christmas time. You know, I used to go home about three times a year at one time, but my wife hasn't been too well, and we're waiting for her to to recover. You know, and uh, so that we can make these trips more frequently. But right now we only make it like once a year, and uh, and it's for Christmas time and New Year's we spend it at our home in England, which is absolutely fantastic because yeah. you know most of my family comes from there, and 
and uh, my sisters, and my brothers, and and sometimes my my own children take a trip over and, and spend Christmas with us in in England, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, one of the ways I like to spend my Christmas because it takes me back to when my mother and father were alive and I would spend it with them. And you must feel like Lord of the Manor when you're at that house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not only Lord of the Manor, I'm the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> bartender works for me. Yeah. 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 Uh, you uh, have not got the title, sir. Would you like to have the title, sir? Yeah, I, th I think it's, 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 uh, it would be very, very, very nice. I, I, I'm patient. I can wait. I think about the achievements that you've had over the years and you know when I see some of the people that have had the uh, the title it must be something that you know they must be looking down the list and going you know <laughs> maybe it's time you may, oh, I, maybe. I don't know yeah but you know what I was there I was in the palace uh, not so long ago because I belonged to uh, uh, the water rats and it was their 125th anniversary and we celebrated it at the at the at the palace and the Queen gave speech and and I got to see her and meet her again. And uh, I, I'd met her, you know, when I first started uh, uh, being successful and I was at the, uh, at the Palladium and she, uh, she was there and I met her for the first time. Um, and there were people like uh, Petula Clark with me and Glenn Campbell and, uh, and the, t uh, the Supremes. <laughs> they were all on the same bill, you know, meeting the Queen. And, and it was just, uh, and then, then now I've met her all these many, many years later, and she's still as charming as ever. Mm. She really is. Mm. The family has really moved all over the world, including you know one little scallywag that lives in Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. You know that that bloke over there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you must have uh, grandchildren now with Aussie accents. Well, yes, they do. That, have mu that must be a strange feeling. Yeah. Then. It's lovely, though. You know, I love my gran my grandchildren. I have uh, eight now. And uh, and they're all they all have their own little personalities, which is recognised by by me because I love to see it. And uh, uh, and I'm I'm going to be seeing my son Scott's his children very very shortly uh, when we get to Sydney, you know. And uh, it's going to be very thrilling to see how they've grown up. Mm -hmm. And and uh, they, they they don't call me Grandpa, by the way. Yeah. They call me Boomer. 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 Where does that come from? <laughs> I, I guess I guess it's because when they were very little, they couldn't say grandpa, so they're yeah. boomer. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, I think that's how it came about. It's 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 obviously stuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're heading very quickly towards the fiftieth anniversary of when uh, the first song "Release Me" came out. Uh, what are the plans for the fiftieth anniversary celebrations? <sighs> I hope it's going to be a wonderful year. Uh, as as release me has taken me through my journey in show business with with delight, mm -hmm. and uh, I haven't regretted one moment of my time because I've been it's a, it's it's afforded me the luxury of going to so many different countries in the world and uh, experiences their their cultures and and learning about and and being able to see sights that I would have never have seen had it not been for that one song. Mm. It uh, could be the appropriate time for that knighthood to come along. 50 <laughs> years, 50 years, <laughs> well, you know? Let's hope. Yeah. Um, there was a bit of controversy over uh, the last couple of weeks with uh, uh, an ex-label uh, mate of yours, uh, Tom Jones, uh, making a, a few words. How did you feel about those comments? About his comment? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll I be honest with you, I read it and uh, I really have no comment about it. Uh, I feel that if it was worth commenting on, I certainly would. Mm -hmm. Were you shocked? Shocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Uh, uh, I grew up with my family teaching me things that uh, uh, how to be civil, you know, and if you can't say anything nice about somebody, don't say anything at all. But, you know, a silent tongue has a wise head. Uh, all those expressions came from my family, you know. Uh, civility costs nothing, you know. Uh, and I learned it from them, and I've I've maintained it, and I I I tend to use use their words when the time comes, such as now. Mm. And you know, when you know it comes from somebody that does have a knighthood, it sounds a bit out of place, anyway. 
to each his own. Yeah. Um, do you have retirement plans? Oh no, what is that retirement? <laughs> what is retirement? I mean, what am I going to do? I mean, I, I just, you know, I was so fortunate I created such a great, uh, a, a great following and they've stayed with me for so long, my fans. And I've always, you know, I, t I term them as my spark plugs and, and cheerleaders. And I don't know, everywhere I go, I see familiar faces. And it's so wonderful to know that my music has created friendship. Or, you know, people have created friendship through my music. They've got together, they've been, they get on the computer, get in touch with each other. Oh, I'm coming to here, I'm going to there. So, uh, you know, my fan clubs have been a very important asset to me, very important. Mm. Well, Bert Bacharach is 87, he's still touring. Uh, there Be you go. Betty White, 93 years old and yeah. still working. Yeah, and, and you know what, uh, uh, <clears throat> Bert wrote a song for me. Some of the songs he's written are unbelievable, mm. like, you know, House Is Not A Home, and, mm. but he wrote I'm A Better Man For Me. Is that right? Yeah, uh, and it was probably one of the nicest songs I've ever recorded in my life. Very difficult song to sing on stage, but then again, he always wrote difficult songs, <laughs> but they were always hits. Mm. Yeah, it, um, you know, it must be quite a research exercise, just you know, going through and discovering the songs that you want to record yourself. What about your own personal record collection? What do you, what do you have in uh, in your c CDs or records? At you home? know, uh, I, I don't, I'm I'm not. You don't buy anything anymore. You you just listen to what's going on, and something that uh, 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 something will come up on your on your phone. Say, oh, the Journey's albums out. Let's have a listen to that, and then you have a listen. You know, and and you, you should do it in that respect now, because there's no, there's no shops to go to. You can't buy a record or, or a, a, a CD, as they call it today. Mm. Um, but I just, I do, I do watch what goes on on, on TV. I, I watch The Voice and, and the talent shows and see what's happening. Some amazing talent out there. And, uh, and these people are very lucky because they have the opportunity of being seen by millions at one time. And they you know, a, a, a name that came from nowhere, goes to somewhere very, very quickly. Mm. But you have to have a lot of talent to keep it up. Mm. Well, it's great to talk to you again. Uh, Engelbert Humperdinck joining us here at Noise 11, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Paul. Always nice talking with you.